Hi everyone, I'm Ava. And I'm Eileen. And welcome to Harping Around. Like we mentioned in our last episode, today we will be talking about recording tips. Yes, this is our first episode back since we attended the Summer Institute in Los Angeles. And at the end of this episode, we have some special guests who will be talking about their experiences at the Summer Institute. And I'm sure everyone has had a bit of recording experience, whether it be just a small video for yourself or your friends or family, or even something like an audition tape or a competition video. But here are some tips we found make for a great recording. Yeah, to make a good recording, lots of people think that, oh, I don't have all the fancy equipment and everything. I don't have a mini sound booth or anything. Oh, that is really nice. You don't need anything that fancy. You just need something to record the audio, and if you're doing video, something to get what you're seeing. But for now, let's go ahead and start with the audio side of things. Yes. Mainly for audio, I think the most important thing is checking for background noise since you want, you're planning to be the focus of the audio, not some random miscellaneous background noise. So finding a nice and quiet environment is pretty key. It really is. And sometimes it's so easy to overlook some of those little noises like yeah. the refrigerator, if the kitchen is in the next room, or if your dad's taking a nap nearby and he's snoring, <laughs> you might not notice some of these sounds in everyday life. But anybody who's not at your house every day, they will definitely notice. So kind of make a little scan of the sounds around you before you hit record, just in case. And also at the end of your recording, you should definitely let it ring for longer than normal since the audio is going to pick that up. And if you cut it short, it'll kind of be an awkward of the audio. Yes, that sounds really silly when that happens too. <laughs> oh, and also for things to be careful about with the audio, be careful not to spike the audio. Now, some of you might know that term, others might not. A spike in the audio is basically like when you're on a Zoom call with a friend who lives far away and there's a big bang or a crash or other loud noise and the speakers kind of distort the sound. That's a spike when it gets too loud for the microphone and the speakers to be able to handle well. Now, the harp, you generally don't have to worry about that too much, but if you're playing a piece with a lot of zest and a lot of passion and it's got a lot of energy and a lot of forte make sure that microphone isn't too close because <laughs> you don't want to ruin the sound of your beautiful heart music when all you need to do is scoot the microphone back another foot or two and then that's all you have to do to fix it yeah and you can also play around with adjusting the gain on the microphone if you have one that's also pretty important for making sure you don't have those big spikes Yes, and that is one of the really nice things about having a separate microphone. A lot of people just use the microphone that's built into their tablet, their phone, or desktop computer, and a lot of those work well. But if you are ready to kind of take the jump into getting a microphone specifically for making harp recordings, here are a few that we have found that have worked well and have gotten very good ratings from people who have used them. Yeah, and we'll leave these down in the description, but to start us off, there's the Shure Motive 88, the Rode Video Mic Pro, Zoom H4N Pro, Audio Technica AT8024, Blue Snowball USB Microphone, and the Yeti, which I personally have. Um, those are all highly recommended by professional harpists. Yes, and each one of these microphones all have great things that they each have to offer and their own little quirks and nuances where someone might say really like the blue snowball, but their best harp buddy might say, yeah, that's good, but I kind of prefer the Yeti. It's all a matter of personal preference. And if you're fortunate enough to be able to listen to recordings made with each of these microphones, that will help you make a good investment as to what microphone you like the sound of the best. 
and you're probably wondering, okay, you all are talking about the audio. You mentioned video earlier. Well, we have heard very good recommendations about the Logitech HD Pro webcam and C920 or similar. But once again, you can, if your camera is good enough built in to say your desktop, your tablet or something like that, by all means, go ahead and use that. Personally, I frequently use my DSLR camera that I use for photography and it works quite well, but it's all a matter of what you have. And there's no need to go out and make a trip to the tech store just for one recording, unless of course you want to. And then with video recordings, there's also like a lot of course and things with making sure you have the most professional looking um, background is pretty important. So having a nice flat background without clutter can definitely help it look more professional, making sure you don't have like a lot of clutter and like random stuff. I think having a nice and flat background is very important. Yes. And as you can see, Ava and I have a nice simple wall behind us with our harps, of course. It doesn't mean that you have to pick the most boring wall in your house just to make a recording, but nothing that's going to take away from you or your music. Now, if you got a lot of books on a bookshelf or something, that can start to get a little busy, especially if it's through your strings. Then again, that makes it a little hard to play when you've got a bunch of books behind your strings. So mm -hmm. keep it simple and clean. Yes. And simple and clean also applies to your lighting. This mm -hmm. is one that even a lot of new filmmakers struggle with and a lot of experienced filmmakers for that matter. Flipping on the light in your harp room gives you plenty of light to be able to see your music and your strings and all that. But cameras see things differently than the human eye does. And one thing that might look good with lighting just in a normal room can look really funny on camera. So take the time to experiment, see if there's these really weird shadows on your face or something, or if it's super bright where you're washed out. And if you do have something like that, I would recommend using a filmmaker trick that I am using myself right now paper. A piece of cardstock paper is great for just reflecting just a little bit of light onto a person or an object to just kind of take the edge off of some of those shadows. Now if you need something a little bit more reflective than a white sheet of paper, you can use aluminum foil or head out to your mom's car and grab the reflective windshield cover if you need a lot. Those are some great tips. And also make sure one thing I think is important to not be um, backlit. You want to have the light coming from in front of you instead of behind you. Otherwise, it's going to look a little funky. And also, um, you can decide on whether to film vertically or horizontally. I find that vertical shots are normally for like YouTube and like TikTok and as such, whereas for like a video, um, you're going to publish a YouTube or for like a competition, it's more important to have like horizontal so you can get sort of a nice full view of everything. Yes, and there's certainly great uses for both orientations of the camera. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. If you're using your phone or tablet, that's easy, but turning a handheld camera sideways, that can be a little tricky. So mm -hmm. depending on which look you want, might determine whether you choose to use your phone to record or the family video camera. At the end of the day, it's pretty important to um, have a full view of your fingers and just, I mean, have fun with it and experiment with different, um, different setups. I know when I'm recording, I like to take a couple of takes of just me sitting at the harp to see what it looks like and then I'll go and record. So I don't end up recording the whole way through and then look back and be like, oh, yes, I didn't like that at all. So that's very important to experiment. Yeah, so that's a very good idea, Ava, to be able to just look and see exactly how it is. And it makes the actual recording process so much easier because then you're not worried about, uh oh, how does that look like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I would definitely recommend for everybody who's interested in recording themselves with video to 
and give Ava's method a try. <laughs> and then also there's syncing. I mean, a lot of people will do video and then have their microphone going with the audio and then sync those together. Um, that's also a pretty good alternative to do. Yeah, so it's something that if you're a little intimidated by technology, you might not be the best option for your very first video recording. But once you start mm -hmm. to get comfortable with it, that can take your recordings to a totally amazing new level and make them look really professional if you got a good setup going. But most importantly, the more you do it, the easier it will get. We're all familiar with what that's like with that tricky piece that seems like it's never going to stick and then one day it sticks. It's the same way with recording. Even a simple audio recording where you don't have to worry about brushing your hair or anything like that. It takes time and practice, but it is well worth it. And don't forget to have fun with it because that's the whole point of it is to be able to just relax and have fun playing the instrument that we all love to play. So those were our tips for recording. Obviously, there's a lot more information out there. So we'll leave a couple of links in the description for you guys to check out. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we have two special guests here today, and they're going to share with us a little bit about their experience at the Summer Institute. And so today we have Grace and Alice. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm Grace and this is Alice. Well, thank you so much, Alice and Grace, for coming on to harping around with us today. Now, I'm curious to know what were some of your favorite things that you got to do or see at the Summer Institute? Well, I enjoyed the master class meeting other young composers and different harpists. Living in a cozy hotel was also something I really enjoyed. I enjoyed watching those competitions and it made me inspired of them and I want to go compete too next next year. Oh, that's great. Now, was there something that you would highly recommend about going to the Summer Institute that you want to make sure everybody knows is there that they might not know about unless they went. Um, tying, um, learning how to tie strings. Yeah, the, with, you can learn to tie with the licorice. Yeah, and then um, Karen said it's the bunny and the buddy. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Did you and guys... Also, oh, continue. You know, this, um, man called Will, since I was not part of like the, you know, the composing thing, I wasn't able to practice, but I always asked him every single day and he eventually uh, let me. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Did you have a favorite piece you were practicing? Yeah, it was like tango. I was inspired by the competition places, so I played better in, when I was practicing. Well, that's great. Well, it sounds like it was really beneficial and not just in the learning, but also having a lot of fun too. And yeah. also it's just kind of fun to be around a bunch of other harpists. <laughs> Did you guys have a favorite performance that you listened to? Oh yeah, I really liked Caroline's performance where she did all those cool tricks. Mm, yeah, really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some truly amazing concerts there at the Institute. And yeah. I don't know how you were able to pick. There were so many that were so good, but I agree that was an especially good one. Mm -hmm. Like a concert? Yeah. I didn't watch every single one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so much to do. It's kind of hard to choose sometimes. Yeah. Now. I've got a big question for both of you. After going to the Summer Institute this year, do you plan on going to another one in the future or an AHS conference? Yeah, we yeah. Are, we're, we're planning to go in the one on Lando. Yeah, and we're gonna go the one after that and after that yeah. because we were so inspired. Oh. Yeah. That's great, that's great. Well, maybe we'll see you guys at another one. Yeah. In the
Maybe next year in the summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be able to meet up and again and see yeah. you in Orlando. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much for coming on and joining us today. Hopefully you guys can come on again in the future, but thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for watching. That was our episode on recording tips, and we hope you found some helpful tips for your next recording. Thank you for listening.